growing up, I played a bunch of sports. I think I started out playing basketball when I was really young. Was not very good at it, very clumsy. He was, Jordan was really active, really active as a child. Soon he did, he started walking um, and basically started running. From the time he started walking, he, he, he was running, running everywhere. And he played soccer basically from the time he was six years old up until he was 16. That was my first love, you know, I started, like, I realized, that's when I realized I was fast. I started scoring a lot of goals and all that stuff. Started getting, I used to be daddy, used to give me $5 for every goal I'd score. Basically, my parents just thought I had too much energy, so they tried to put me in every sport they could so I wouldn't get into trouble out here in Oceanside. Prior to attending the University of Washington, Jordan had some close influences with the Holder family. Twin brothers Micah and Elijah were teenagers teammates of Jordan's and helped sway his passion toward football. So I grew up with Mike and Elijah and, um, and their older brother King. And um, when I was in middle school, uh, their older brother King would have football games and he was actually getting highly recruited. And I thought he was, no one is as cool as King Holder. And I was just, I wanted to wear his number and I wanted to play football just like him. And um, so when I got to high school, I said, I'm gonna try football out. I never played and nothing like that, but I said, I'm gonna go to Oceanside, I'm trying to play football like King. While at Oceanside, Jordan had to wait his turn. With the program on the verge of making a state title run, the talent pool at Oceanside was very deep. Good thing about going to Oceanside and having Coach Carroll is that he talked me up so much to these coaches, even though I wasn't a starter till my senior year. Like they said, this guy right here, he can play. And um, I had a lot of college coaches come and watch me do seven on seven. And it was just kind of an exciting time. I think my first offer was Weber State. And I came in and I was, I was that's during a time when I thought I was gonna go to school for track and that's it. We actually thought he was gonna have a career in track because he, he was not starting until his uh, senior year. So we really expected that if he was gonna get any scholarship offers that he would um, get them for track. I wasn't even really thinking about football like that. So that Weaver State offer came in and I was like, man, dad took me out to eat Red Lobster and then I was like all excited about it. And then two days later I got Utah, then UW. Just fell in love with Washington from, from the beginning, from, fell in love with the coaching and with the, the stadium, just beautiful, just, the, the, just everything. While being recruited to the University of Washington, the expectation was to redshirt and save a year of eligibility, but the coaching staff had other ideas. When I came into UW, I thought I was going to 100% redshirt because I came into UW at about 157 pounds. He was a little guy, he needed to gain weight. and. A couple weeks before the Boise State game, he says, uh, yeah, I don't think they're redshirting me, Mom. And I went, don't, don't you have a choice? And he's like, well, yeah, but you don't say no when they're saying we're not going to redshirt you. <laughs> Coach Lake said, he's like, hey, man, I think you can play here. You can play this year and make a difference for us and told me to play here. And I, it was really shocking to me, and I didn't know if it was what I wanted to do, but I mean, I wasn't going to say no. He had his first interception his freshman year. Just, you know, the garbage time, they say, but it was a nice interception. It was beautiful. I ran it back like 55 yards. <laughs> so my junior year started out real good. And I, I was balling. I was having a really good year. I had two picks really early. I, I wasn't getting caught on. And then against Arizona State, last play of the game, I was chasing down a guy, and um, our safety, Taylor Rapp, came in, made a tackle, and he swiped my leg, broke my ankle. That injury was scary. <laughs> I think it made him a stronger person, you know, to appreciate, appreciate the things that kind of come easy sometimes. That was probably the hardest part about it is just I've never been hurt before, so it just never seemed real and it didn't seem real until about a month later when I just got out of surgery and I'm still in a boot. I'm like, man, it's tough, but it taught me a lot about myself, how me how to just live life like to the fullest and just know that anything can be taken away from you anytime. Jordan knows firsthand that he shouldn't take life for granted. His best friend, John Grumbling, nearly lost his life in an unfortunate accident. I think it was probably around January of last year where uh, he was coming back home from TJ with a couple of group, a group of my friends. We're actually all friends, all good from Ocean side, and he's doing some John stuff. You know, he always does parkour, he climbs trees. He's a kind of a wild one. He was kind of sliding sitting down, sliding down um, the, the bridge coming from Mexico back over to the U.S. and fell 100 feet into a construction zone in between two rebars and basically um, had a traumatic brain injury. We had to bring Jordan right back to see him because we didn't know what was going to happen, you know, right away. He was in a coma for like I think a couple weeks or something like that. When he came out of it, he wasn't fully operable, you know, he uh, still his right side wasn't working too well and he couldn't talk. He had to, they had to put a feeding tube in his throat. Jordan's like, this is, this is, I gotta, I gotta work hard. I, I gotta be there for my brother. I'm hoping that with this NFL thing, getting the money to help him get out of there, 
and just be be closer to us be either closer to the ocean side or closer to his family because i think it feel like being close to people he knows is key to him getting better and I'm, that's something i've been really keen on trying to get right for a long time I'm excited to be able to be able to make a difference after wowing scouts at this year's combine jordan received a call from the atlanta falcons in the fifth round pick 172. That brings him one step closer to being able to provide for his best friend, a position he knows he's very fortunate to even be in. Eight years ago, I wasn't even playing the sport. So, uh, I mean, it might seem like a long time, but it really isn't that long. And I know that not many people are as blessed as I am to be in the position that I am. And considering that I didn't play the sport and I, my freshman year of high school, I wasn't even really that good. And the fact that I even came back and played another year and played till now, it's just crazy to me. So I feel like just being able to persevere and just work hard I think that's key in being an athlete or being a person to continue to grow every day. He doesn't have to play at the next level to make us proud. We've always been proud of him no matter what he does. You know, he's just an awesome kid. He's an awesome kid.